We have two great speakers today talking about the green chemistry commitment. And our first speaker will be Amy Cannon, who is the executive director of Beyond Benign, which is one of the, uh, I guess I would say, sponsors or originators of the green chemistry commitment. And she will be followed by uh, Ed Brush, who's with the Department of Chemistry at Bridgewater State University at, in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. And he will be talking about committing to green chemistry at Bridgewater State University. So we're going to start out with Amy's presentation called Transforming Chemistry Education Through the Green Chemistry. And I will hand it over to you, Amy. Thank you so much, Len. Um, thank you so much for inviting me to participate in, in um, your monthly seminars. And thank you, everyone, for uh, calling in and spending time with us today. So I'm going to talk to you about a new program that we've been working on here at Beyond the Nine and in collaboration with uh, several faculty members from throughout the United States. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but we're calling it the Green Chemistry Commitment. And before I get into that, let me just um, just bri very briefly about Beyond Benign. We're coming up to, well, actually, we just passed our fifth anniversary here. So we're five years old. We're a nonprofit um, founded by myself and John Warner. We, uh, back when we left the University of Massachusetts at Lowell, we wanted to continue doing all of our education work. So we founded a, a nonprofit organization in order to do that. And here at Beyond Benign, we do work in green chemistry education from K through 12 um, in the community and academia and industry. So we do quite a bit of green chemistry education work in all, in basically um, all different areas. Um, we're co-located with the Warner Babcock Institute for Green Chemistry, so we're lucky enough to peek over their shoulders and see what great chemistry they're working on here in the labs. Uh, that gives us quite a, quite a great advantage here. Um, so that's just a little bit about Beyond Benign. And um, the green chemistry commitment came from an idea that we had, um, geez, it was over, over a year ago now, probably about a year and a half ago. We had, um, I had met with uh, Tony Cortese, which, which you may know is the founder of Second Nature, and also a... Um, he organized what's called the American College and University President's Climate Commitment, which you're, if you're in, in academia, you may know uh, that many of your colleges and universities are signers of this commitment. Um, but we had talked to Tony and learned more about the President's Climate Commitment. And you know, we got to thinking, well, what a great model in terms of asking colleges and universities, rather than waiting for some mandate to, in, this, in the climate commitment, rather than waiting for something to be mandated, um, you know, that we must reduce greenhouse gas emissions, um, why not take an initiative for colleges and universities to sign on and to commit to changing now? So the climate commitment is very different from the green chemistry commitment, but the, the model really stemmed from that. Um, where the climate commitment has very, been very much infrastructure-based and the green chemistry commitment is more curriculum-based. Um, but we thought, hey, wouldn't that be a great thing for, for colleges and universities? And there's already so many um, faculty throughout the country that are already doing this. So can we formalize this a little bit more, come together for a collective voice around um, incorporating green chemistry in colleges and universities? So the goals of the Green Chemistry Commitment are really to work closely with higher education institutions. Obviously, that's key and the central piece of what the commitment's all about. Um, there's, again, we already, as, I, as I just said, uh, there's already so many faculty out there, faculty and departments out there committing to incorporating green chemistry into their programs. And, and um, we want to highlight that existing work and build on it. So um, we're hoping that the commitment can unite the community around common goals and objectives. And again, so we can bring a common voice to the community for committing to change. Um, we're hoping that 
the green chemistry commitment can help to systematically bring green chemistry into academia for lasting change. Um, we're hoping that the commitment can influence things such as the, the American Chemical Society um, Committee for Professional Training, the CPT guidelines. So we're hoping that through this common, these common goals and objectives, we can really um, come together around some common things and actually help to transform chemistry education, which again, um, you know, getting to that second highlighting existing work and programs, there's already so much work going on in this area. So it's really more just organizing and building on that work. The, what have we been up to? So the process of the green chemistry commitment is um, beyond the nine us here at the, at the nonprofit. We've been helping to really um, organize this and um, we put together a first draft of the green chemistry commitment and we quickly realized that we needed to really get more involvement from a, a, essentially a steering committee, or we, we've called them a faculty advisory board, and essentially they, they're more of a steering committee helping us to shape the green chemistry commitment. So we talked to the community, we gathered feedback, and then again, we formed um, this faculty advisory board last summer. So we've been working closely with them for the past year, and um, we've got more work to do, but we, <laughs> what we essentially have a version which I'll, sh I'll share with you. Uh, we're calling it version 2.2 of the Green Chemistry Commitment. Um, so essentially what this faculty advisory board has done with, with us, um, they've been absolutely fantastic. And they took our first draft and they essentially you know, ripped it apart, which I would expect them to do, and then they put it back together in a way that they think that the commitment can work for them. Um, so that's what we've got. Um, we held a summit back in January of 2012, so back at the beginning of this year, where we presented our initial work to the community, and again, we're gathering feedback to help shape and, and rework the commitment. Um, and so we're working on finalizing the commitment. We're hoping that can be done by October. It might be a little bit later than that. Um, and we're hoping that the first official rollout will be uh, our, our target date for that will be June of 2013, and that will coincide with the Green Chemistry um, and Engineering Conference in Washington, D.C. So that's really the process, and, and it's an ongoing process. The commitment will be something that's constantly, that will be really uh, revised from on a regular basis, and um, it will be hopefully a reflection of the community, and so it will be essentially um, evolving over time. So we have the commitment, we're hope, this is a representation of the faculty advisory board, which I have on the next slide, a list of the faculty that we've been working with. Um, so you can see the faculty we've been working with over the past year. They've been absolutely fantastic, and um, we do have a few that are from here in the Northeast region, but we also have some from the West Coast in the middle of the country as well, so we have a pretty good representation of, of schools here, both large and small. And um, also we have, you'll notice we have different levels of, we have full professors, assistant professors, and associate professors, so we have a pretty good representation of faculty as well. Um, and on today's call, you'll hear from Dr. Ed Brush. He's been a fantastic leader in green chemistry education from Bridgewater State University. And we've been fortunate enough to be in close proximity with him and been able to work with him on a number of things. So we're very lucky to have him on the call today. So he'll speak from a faculty perspective about the commitment and how that applies to his department at Bridgewater State. So um, getting to the meat of it, the commitment, um, this is, you'll notice the draft in the background, and this is a very much a draft um, that we're hoping and in, in, we're wanting more feedback. We want feedback from the community, so please, if you're on the call today and you're a faculty member and see this and would like to be involved, please do contact us because we want, we want your voice heard in, in this as well. So um, the commitment text is, is all based around student learning objectives. So, um, and this is a key piece. 
so it started with, with the first draft of the, of the commitment. It started more of a, okay, a list of things that, that uh, faculty and departments should have in their programs that might be absent in programs today. But what the Faculty Advisory Board helped us do is actually helped us turn that around and have it focus on more student learning objectives based. So what this does is it provides flexibility for departments, since each department, each college and university has different resources, they have different faculty, um, each place is very, they're going to want to implement things differently. And we want to recognize that and, and provide, you know, allow for that flexibility. So the student learning objectives allows for us to agree on what, what we think, you know, students should be coming out of colleges and universities with understanding in and with what, what skills they should have and that sort of thing. But what it does is it leaves it open for how the in a college and university program. So it allows for that flexibility, which we think is really key. So the student learning objectives have, um, they're based around these four aspects. They're um, knowledge-based, skills and performance-based, there's ethical, and um, affective, essentially how students apply their skills in a professional setting. So you'll see we essentially have um, four uh, learning objectives, and I'll, I'll get jump to the, uh, the meat of the text here on this next slide. The green chemistry student learning objectives are really based around these four bullet points. These four bullet points are pretty jam-packed as well, um, but here's the meat of it. So we have theory. So students should come out of a, a, a program, a chemistry program, with a working knowledge of the 12 principles of green chemistry, which really provides the heart of what green chemistry is all about. Toxicology. This is a big one, um, and this kind of has been a red flag for us, and I'll speak a little bit more about that. this one. Um, but toxicology, understanding the principles of toxicology, molecular mechanisms of how chemicals affect human health and the environment, and um, the resources and having the resources to identify and assess molecular hazards. Now this is, again, a jam-packed bullet point, and we, we don't expect colleges programs, we don't expect programs to um, be able to do this tomorrow because we, we recognize that there are lots of resources especially around this toxicology piece that might not be available just yet, but we're getting there and we're learning more and more and, and there's, there's many um, places and organizations that are working on more and more curriculum that can be used to teach toxicology to chemistry majors. So that is another one um, that, or this, this is a key bullet point we think in, in um, the commitment to recognize is that this has really been absent from our training as chemists, you know, throughout history. So it's, it's, and it's one of the aspects that we think has been missing and a key piece to um, really looking forward to designing and how we design uh, chemical products and processes in a more sustainable way. So um, I, might, I might jump back to that point, too, um, at, at some point as well. The third bullet is laboratory skills. And this is, again, another key piece to green chemistry is how it, how it can be implemented within a laboratory setting. So having the ability to recognize, assess, and design, again, design that key word, um, design greener alternative chemical products and processes. And the laboratory skills oftentimes is where green chemistry implementation starts at colleges and universities, which is, which is quite exciting because it's a key piece. And then the fourth is more that affective-based uh, student learning objective. So how do students apply this in their professional capacity as scientists and as professionals through the articulation, evaluation, employment of methods and chemicals that are benign for human health and the environment. So how do they apply it in whatever they, they um, do beyond their learnings? So this is what the, the commitment is based around. And again, it's the, how are the student learning objectives achieved? They're, they're achieved through a number of different ways. And we have come up with really three ways that, that programs can implement the student learning objectives. They can be integrated into existing courses, so that's embedding green chemistry, embedding toxicology and units within existing courses. 
um, swapping out greener chemistry laboratories for, um, you know, throughout laboratory courses, things like that. That's, um, you know, integration. Or programs and can actually develop new courses dedicated to green chemistry. Um, you know, and you can see these differences in different programs. For example, U University of Massachusetts Boston, where I graduated from, they were able to create a whole new PhD program around green chemistry. But not every college or university is going to be able to do that or will want to do that. And so this allows for that flexibility, can be integrated into existing courses, it can be created as separate courses. And then um, the third bullet here is external. So rather, we take advantage of some elective courses in other departments at, you know, at within your college or university. So are there other toxicology, environmental health sciences, or other environmental science courses that students can take as electives from other departments? So, so these are some of the options. Again, each place is going to be different with how they integrate the learning objectives and how they work with the commitment. So um, we're hoping that this allows that flexibility um, for each place to, to do it the way that, you know, they, that works for them. So the green chemistry commitment, we also are putting together um, awards, recognition, and reporting. So there will be regular reporting that goes along with, with the green chemistry commitment. We're working on that now on how to actually make that a nice streamlined way, way of reporting that does not add an extra burden to departments that are already stressed for time. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. And we also want to, again, recognize the great work that's out there in the, in the green chemistry community, all of the, the wonderful faculty and departments that are implementing green chemistry already and um, will be in the future. So that's the awards and recognition, recognition piece, and I'll, I'll just touch on those a bit in this, in this next couple slides. The awards, this is kind of a lot of words on this page, so I, I promise you I will not read it all, but basically our, the awards are we're hoping that we can celebrate individuals, departments, and student accomplishments. And this is focused around green chemistry education. So there's, there's awards out there around green chemistry. Mostly, um, they're mostly for research awards, which is fantastic. So this, these will be focused on green chemistry education. So there's individuals recognizing that so many times a department that has changed their chemistry or, or their courses and, and has um, embraced green chemistry, so many times departments, it starts with the individual. So we want to recognize that. We want to recognize the individual accomplishments. Um, and we also want to recognize departments, departments that are, that are leading the way and actually um, beginning to test those waters on how they might be able to incorporate toxicology as, as a new course or as, as a new requirement within a chemistry program. So we want to be able to recognize those departmental accomplishments. And also students. Students are huge advocates for green chemistry, for implementing green chemistry in departments. And you know, oftentimes, one student can make a huge difference. And we have some great stories of departments that have completely transformed because of one student. So we want to be able to acknowledge that as well. And I won't, I won't, um, I know these slides will be available so you can go back to these to read all of the details on it as well. Um, assessment and reporting, again, as I mentioned before, we want these to be streamlined and as simple as possible for the assessment and reporting piece. So if a college or university program signs on and says, yes, we want to be part of the green chemistry commitment, we will have essentially an annual reporting process. And what we're envisioning these to be, and we'll hopefully be sharing these very soon, and we would love your feedback on these to, again, make them as, as simple as possible. We want to help track goals and accomplishments. So essentially asking departments to set individual goals for um, how they want to implement green chemistry, and we can help them through this reporting process. Again, very simple reporting. I know 
know that word might put up another little red, red flag, but simple reports to help track goals. And we're hoping they can also, we can also help capture the progress of the field as a whole as well through this reporting. Um, this were the green chemistry commitment we envision will be essentially a peer reviewed um, and uh, it's, it, will, it will be guided by an advisory board where we have a minimum of 10 faculty members from 10 different institutions throughout the US. And they will be appointed for a number of about three or four years is what we're envisioning for this advisory board. Um, it'll be similar to what we've been working with over the past year with our with our faculty, our wonderful faculty that we've been working with. And we will also um, bring in some outside uh, professionals, which is what we have in our advisory board, too. We actually have some folks from the EPA. So Nick Anastas has joined our board, um, as well as David Wiley from the Green Chemistry Institute. So we have some um, outside representatives um, coming in to have a voice on this as well. Um, so resources that we anticipate being available. We do not want to um, duplicate other, other uh, resources that are out there, such as the GEMS database. We, will, we absolutely love that database, and we'll be linking to it um, because it's a wonderful curricular resource. Um, we will have other materials available on, on the Green Chemistry Commitment that you might not find there, or they will be posted in both places. Um, but essentially looking at model courses and model curricula. There's been a lot of questions, or, or we've, we've gotten a lot of questions from um, administrators or department chairs you know, saying essentially, well, OK, this is great, but how, is, how can green chemistry be implemented throughout, say, a four-year program, a four-year undergraduate program? How, does, how can it be um, uh, incorporated in the first year, second year? So essentially a map of how it can be incorporated and different models of how it's been done at different places. So those sort of resources we're working on and will be available. Toxicology, again, I say is a key piece that has been missing. Um, we're working on toxicology curriculum here at Beyond Benign. It's another key piece to our academic work. Um, so that, we're hoping that can be available. We, um, we are hoping to be able to share other toxicology curriculum and resources from other institutions that have been implementing courses, such as Simmons College here in Boston who um, John Warner and I were fortunate enough to help teach a course there for their chemistry majors on toxicology. So the curriculum and resources from some of the, these courses we're hoping to post and share, or we will be posting and sharing them. Um, we will have resources for stakeholder groups. So um, basically how, how uh, you know, resources for students or faculty or administration to be able to bring to departments and, or professors to um, say, hey, you know, this is something that um, maybe we want to check, it, check out and how they actually can um, sign up for the commitment and get others involved. So we have uh, future potential resources, and these will depend, um, you know, these will be something that we're looking to the future for, but we're, we're hoping to have some member-only resources, such as professional development opportunities, so mini grants for um, workshops for professional development and that sort of thing, mini grants for student research, faculty staff time, that sort of thing. So those are our future resources that we hope to have, um, or that we're planning on having in the future. So we want to have stakeholder engagement. We want to have um, faculty. We want to have all of these organizations and people involved in the green chemistry commitment. And we're really working to um, have a diverse set of voices um, involved with the commitment. And we think that we really need to get faculty, administration, all of these, all of these places, um, industry involved. Um, students involved. So this is what we're working on in order to um, really build and grow the commitment. Our next steps, we have, um, we've been working on a, um, a, a letter to the American Couple Society, the CPT, 
the Committee for Professional Training this year. If, if you didn't see, there was, I think it was back in January this year, um, in CNE News, they had an article that said the CPT is looking for comments. They're, they're looking to um, rework their current CPT guidelines. And so they're looking for comments and they're, they're looking for feedback from the community. So we have a letter that we'll be sending to them. I'm happy to share that. Please send me an email if you'd like to see what, what we've got so far. And um, we, or if you'd like to sign the letter with us as well. Um, we, we're working on that as well. So talking about how green chemistry can be incorporated into an undergraduate chemistry curriculum. We would, we're looking to collaborate with other sustainable initiative uh, on campuses, and um, that's another key piece, other organizations, but also other, you know, on your own campus, uh, there, there's probably already existing sustainability initiatives. So linking with those is, is another key piece to the commitment to growing it from campus to campus. Um, we're working on recruiting signers, initial signers, which we should have finalized and um, for, well, we'll be working on that through the fall and spring to lead up for the June launch of next year. And um, we'll have more information about that June launch as well. So this is my last slide here, but there's, there's, we're reworking the website currently. We'll have a lot more information that that's, the new website will be launched over within a month, we believe. So it should be October, possibly November. My uh, email address right th is right there, amy underscore can at beyondbenign.org, so please connect with us if you would like to get involved, if you'd like more information and all of that. And um, at this point, I'd like to hand it over to Ed, who again has been working with us very closely, and I can't thank him enough for um, all of the work he's done with us and for being on the call today. So thank you so much. Okay, Amy, uh, thank you very much, and uh, also thanks to Lynn, and uh, also um, uh, saying hello to all the participants who are listening in today. So I really appreciate um, the work that Amy and the rest of the advisory board has done with the Green Chemistry Commitment. It's really a great piece of work, and what I'm going to talk about here is now that we have this proposal for the Green Chemistry Commitment, I actually wanted to see how well the issue stacks up to the GCC. Okay, so let me start out uh, just by allowing you all to see an overview of uh, Bridgewater State University is all about. So what I did is put together a brief and very simple and somewhat superficial uh, self-assessment of the, the issue chemistry department and also of the individuals and also of the institution in order to evaluate our commitment to green chemistry. In doing so, we focused on a number of the aspects that Amy had mentioned, a broad view, broad view of the learning objectives, how we achieve the learning objectives, and also individual departmental and student, uh, student commitments themselves. So what I have learned and what I really like about the Green Chemistry Commitment is that it is not a formal certification process. It's not even an informal certification process. It is really, um, its purpose is, is to give recognition to individuals, to departments, and to institutions who are moving towards integrating green chemistry in the curriculum. And it puts those folks, to, it puts those folks in, contact, in contact with the rest of the green chemistry community. What I hope is those of you who are listening in, uh, that you will see how your own institutions might also fit in with the green chemistry commitment. Now, with my uh, my mouse here, I just want to note you all know that we started working on green chemistry in our curriculum in 2001. So that's been over 10 years, and you know, in all honesty, it was very slow at first. I would say for the first six or seven years, but it it has begun uh, gaining momentum. And some of that will be obvious as we start going through some of these slides. So first, as the first part of this critical self-assessment um, is evaluating how we fit in with these learning objectives. And as Amy said, this is actually a key piece here. And I have a very, as you can see, a very superficial uh, rating system of weak to moderate to strong. 
All right, so chemistry majors need to have proficiency in the theory, a working knowledge of the 12 principles of green chemistry. Okay, and I rated it as a, a moderate. Okay, and this, this may, be, may be a little generous because what I found is that our students can know what green chemistry is. They've heard of the 12 principles, but they're not really able to say how, why it's important or how to apply it. We also have toxicology principles. Uh, we are weak on this. I have a feeling that most chemistry departments are going to find they're weak in this area. We don't teach toxicology in our chemistry curriculum. Uh, we have an environmental concentration. There is one course in that concentration, and there are two to three classes in that course where there are some modules on the basics of, the basics of toxicology. In laboratory skills, we do a better job in that we are integrating green chemistry into our organic courses, or we actually have done a pretty good job at that. And we're now really, really moving forward at integrating it into our introductory chemistry courses. Uh, the, the weakness is in design. As Amy said, that is the key word here. You know, can a student take a chemical process, evaluate it, and then design a greener or a better process as a replacement? That's, that's where we are weak right now. We're getting better. And finally, the application in one aspect to look at is how we serve society. Uh, again, we're getting better there. We have a expanded outreach program that's growing. We have a number of students getting involved with that. That's more recent, though. Uh, we're also producing students who are going on to teaching careers where they are bringing green chemistry with them or they're moving on to graduate school and they're looking for graduate programs that involve green chemistry. Okay, let's move on to how we achieve these learning objectives. Okay, revisions of existing departmental curriculum, I think we, we our assessments seem to indicate we're doing a really good job here. Green chemistry has been embedded in our first and second year uh, introductory courses, focusing on the labs. Okay, green chemistry labs, as I said, is strong. We're also very strong in research projects. Uh, BSU has a commitment to supporting undergraduate research, and we have students who are in our education programs who are um, developing green chemistry curriculum materials for K-12. We have our own chemistry majors who are engaged in green chemistry research projects. And we also have, <coughs> excuse me, uh, a couple of cross-disciplinary projects that are starting to, that, that, that have been launching. Uh, we had a chemistry, a, a chemistry psychology project uh, where, research project, where we did a survey related to green chemistry. And we have a new developing project involving chemistry, philosophy, and sociology, looking at an ethical aspects of green chemistry. As as far as the toxicology module, modules and existing courses, of course, we're already weak there. In terms of new departmental curriculum, um, again, maybe somewhat generous with a moderate because these are all pretty much in progress or just developing, and that, that's why I have the red there. So developing new chemistry courses or programs. Our environmental concentration is something that we're looking at completely revamping. And one thing we are hoping to do is have a stronger, a much stronger focus on green chemistry there. Uh, the design of toxicology courses, that is, that is also always an issue. It's tough to add in new courses. We already believe that our curriculum is pretty packed. But what, what we found we can do is take some of our existing courses that might be outdated. For example, we have a computers and chemistry course that we can turn possibly into a computational toxicology course that might might serve the need for what our students are going to need. And uh, seminar series, uh, actually our students are developing a seminar series that will have several speakers really uh, speaking about green chemistry. And as far as utilizing other institutional or external re resources, we're pretty weak with this. Um, we do have a toxic an environmental toxicology course taught in our biology department. We suggest occasionally that a student take it if they have an environmental interest, um, or if they are, have an interest in green chemistry. Um, but that is something, that's a, certainly a weak area for us. Moving on, the last set of 
um, assessments has to do with the, the commitments of individuals, of the department, and of, the, and of our students. And this is where we started to see some surprising information. So of the, the seven full-time chemistry faculty, four of us are getting more and more into green chemistry right now. Uh, there's a list of some of the things we've been doing. You see a lot of little red tags there. So many of these are in progress or are being developed. Uh, let me point out a couple of these. We are trying to expand our outreach to K-12 teachers. And we are going to be developing a uh, content-based lecture lab course for in-service teachers that is going to have a focus on green chemistry as well as guided inquiry pedagogy. And this is what the teachers have been asking for. And we're hoping to launch that in fall of 2013. And depending on enrollments, uh, possibly offer it uh, fall and the spring semesters. Um, we are also uh, we also have very strong support to further develop our K-12 outreach. We have a center for STEM education. We have a newly developed project Green Lab, and again, that's going to be a rapidly growing area for us. Uh, my colleague Sam Lone recently taught a course with a big focus on epigenetics. And that is also a big and expanding area under the umbrella of green chemistry. As far as the department, more depend, departmental wide commitments that, that requires the involvement of, of most, if not all, of the chemistry faculty, our strategic goals, which were revised in 2010, okay, have a commitment to sustainability in green chemistry in our education. We recently, or two years ago, received an NSF STEP grant um, that where we developed a strings, pro, a strings program to uh, improve the retention of first and second year STEM students. And what has come out of this is a very strong development of student leadership among our freshman chemistry majors, where these students, they come in the summer before their freshman year, and they engage in green chemistry research in a summer bridge program. And then these student leaders work with other freshmen chemistry and science majors and tell them about what green chemistry is about. And we're finding them to be our best recruiting tool. Uh, our new Green Lab Outreach Education Project is now just getting launched. And we're expecting to have a big impact on uh, in our outreach and professional development to free and in-service K-12 teachers. And as part of that Green Lab Outreach Project, we're also reaching out to our community colleges in southeastern Massachusetts. And our goal is to focus on collaborations with the faculty and students on curriculum, on outreach, and also on student faculty research. And this connects in very nicely with the STREAMS program, because a number of, of these students um, from the regional community colleges do end up transferring to uh, Bridgewater State University. OK, uh, institutional commitments is not something that is really spot, spotlighted in the green chemistry commitment. But I just want to note that our institutional strategic goals do focus on sustainable practices. And I really want to point out our Center for Sustainability. OK, that initiated in 2006. And the center recently uh, launched the summer undergraduate research grants that support students for 10 weeks of research um, that have a focus on sustainability. And of the six to eight grants that have been offered in the last two years, three of those have gone to chemistry students uh, whose research focused on green chemistry. And we're also educating faculty in their professional development and recently had a summer institute on sustainability pedagogy. And a big part of that did focus on green chemistry because of the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary nature of green chemistry. And last, but certainly not least, and Amy made a, a wonderful point about how important students are to the green chemistry commitment. Um, I can't say enough about the role our students here have played. Our students for sustainability is currently being led by chemistry majors. And they are initiating the seminar program. We have a number of pre-service STEM teachers who are developing, um, excuse me, developing laboratories for high, school, uh, for high school chemistry. Our K-12 outreach has been expanding this past summer. We had a number of our 
chemistry majors involved in this, and we had a great summer. We had over 180 middle school kids visiting BSU this summer, and all of, all of those 180 had an experience related to green chemistry. And it all boils down to developing leadership among our STEM students, and uh, the STREAMS program has had an extremely big role in that. And just developing this community of students that get together and, and understand and appreciate what sustainability is about and also what green chemistry is about. So to kind of wrap things up then, the overall grade for us, in, in, in my somewhat maybe not objective view, first off on the learning objectives, the chemistry major's proficiency in green chemistry. Okay, weak to moderate, and the reason for that is our students understand, well, they know what green chemistry is all about, okay, but they're not sure about its applications or importance. Okay, achieving the, not the, the learning objectives, how we're going about this, I rated us as moderate because of the breadth of integration in organic chemistry, freshman chemistry, uh, some upper level courses, in our research as well as our outreach. And finally, the, the interesting piece here was the individual departmental, institutional, and student commitments to green chemistry. This was or had been the limiting factor. And I think this is what really has a big impact on how we achieve these learning objectives. This has now, in the last two or three years, become a very strong aspect for us. And I think this is really going to just push us forward as we go into the future. So I think I'm going to stop there. There are some acknowledgments and uh, turn it back over to the organizers. And thank you all very much. Thanks so much, Ed and Amy, for really interesting uh, and I think um, um, enthusiastic, you know, a, a presentation that's going to gender a lot of enthusiasm among both students and faculty uh, to really begin to support this program. And I just want to note that um, the Great Lakes Green Chemistry Student Network is also really interested in participating in this, and that is why we're having the brown bag next week. And we encourage all those students at the at Bridgewater to um, link up with us as well, because although we say we're from the Great Lakes, and we are, we also um, are very inclusive of all other students who want to work with us and forming a larger network where students can support each other. Oh, here's a question. Great. Let me click on this. How can the Michigan Green Chemistry Education Network get involved in promotion of the commitment? Um, that's a great, great question, and, and um, I'll, actually tomorrow I'll be talking to Dalila Kovacs and um, Rich Hellig from Dow, um, but and Dalila is from the uh, Grand Valley State at, in Michigan, and um, we're talking to her about the Green Chemistry Commitment, and she will be presenting. They're they're going to they're getting more involved with us um, through the Green Chemistry Commitment. They're very interested. And um, she'll be talking about the commitment at the upcoming Michigan conference, um, which is mid-October, I believe, or October? October 26th. Thank you for bringing that up. I wanted to announce There you go. Now. <laughs> right. Um, it's in Detroit on October 26th. And I'm sure you can find out more about it through the Michigan Green Chemistry website, migreenchemistry.org. But go ahead, Amy. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, that's fine. But we're def that's exactly what we're, we're talking about about how to you know how we can work together. So that's um, you know contact us and maybe we can you know get connected with Dalila as well and uh, talk more about that. Okay, and I have another question that says: Are there programs similar to the um, Green Chemistry Challenge that focus on educating chemists in industry? I missed the first word. Are there what, can you grant you similar to the great uh, the green chemistry commitment that focus on educating chemists in the industry? <laughs> great question. Um, we have been working on with the well. I have been working uh, here at Beyond and I. We've been working with the um, GC3, the Green Chemistry Commerce Council, and that is a program out of University of Massachusetts. 
Lowell, Joel Tickner leads that, and um, we've come up with essentially a position statement that will be coming from the GC3 companies about green chemistry education. And it, it speaks about not only um, needing, you know, in order for the pipeline of students that are entering industry to um, have training in green chemistry, but they also recognize that their own employees might not have the training that they need um, or probably don't have the training that they need. So that's actually within this statement and I'm happy to share that statement. That will actually be um, another presentation that will be given at the Michigan conference as well will be also on the, G the GC3 work with, which focuses on, on industry. So absolutely, you're, you're absolutely right that, that it needs to be both um, current, current employees that are out there. Um, you know, ret being retrained and, and updated, and as well as, as the pipeline as well. So that's the only um, really collective effort that I know of coming from the GC3 um, with from an industry perspective. That's the only one that I know of. We have time for one more quick question. Um, the questioner says, I teach introductory chemistry courses, and I have been trying to use Green Lab. Where can I access information about green labs for for general chemistry? Yeah, I would say the GEMS database, um, if you haven't linked up with that already, that's out of the University of Oregon. It's a fantastic resource. It stands for Greener Educational Materials. And you can search it by topic. So if you're looking to introduce um, a particular chemistry topic or, or switch out a particular lab, you can actually search it by topic, um, either you know chemistry topic or um, green chemistry principles. So there's multiple ways of searching for what you need, um, and that's through again. If you just Google Gems Oregon or Gems Green Chemistry, you will find that database. Um, th so that's a great a great resource. Yeah, the had um, website. Ed. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm the website for that is uh, greenchem.uoregon.edu forward slash gems, G-E-M-S. So you can, and if you Google gems Oregon, it'll take you to a bunch of the, it'll take you directly to that uh, listing for that website. So thank you so much, everybody, for your um, for joining us on the webinar, and a great thank you to Ed and to Amy for the terrific presentations.